So welcome to step two on the bridge between Easter and the South African elections on the 29th of May. We are walking this bridge because we believe that the message of Easter, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, should and must have a profound impact on how we approach the elections in our country. And so as part of step two, I've been asked to address the the whole issue of poverty and exclusion. And the question is, how does the gospel guide us when we are faced with the immense inequalities that we see in South Africa? So Jesus, when he announces his mission, stands up in the synagogue and he reads from the scroll of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, and he says this, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now for many, the temptation is simply to spiritualize that announcement, that declaration that all this that Jesus has come to do is really confined to the spiritual world so freedom from from enslavement to sin um, freedom to be in a relationship with god but the truth is that it is so much more than that Um, the way jesus lived and how he acted towards people makes it very clear that that it is not just a spiritual reality but a physical reality that people must experience because of the gospel uh, often people quote Jesus um, when he said in Matthew 26, the poor you will always have with you. as kind of a, a way of saying we don't need to actually deal with the physically poor. We just deal with the spiritually poor. And that simply isn't true. Um, the whole of scripture teaches us that God is passionate that people should have enough that people should have their needs met, that people should live whole and sustainable lives. In fact, Jesus is quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 15. And if we look in Deuteronomy chapter 15, it's it's when Jesus is instructing, uh, when God is instructing his people as they enter into the promised land, he's talking to them about how, how land will work and how finances should work. That's what it's, that chapter is about. I want to really encourage you to go and read it. But but there's kind of a three-stage process going on here. Right at the beginning of that chapter in verse 4, um, he says this about going into the land. He says, however, there need be no poor among you. And, and the reason God says that is because he's saying this land is abundant. It has everything that you would ever need to sustain all of you. And so you need have no poor among you. The world we live in today doesn't need to have poor in it because there there are enough calories to feed everybody in this world. There is enough money. There is enough of everything so that everybody can have enough in this world. However, like God's people, God understands that we don't live like that. Um, Later on, uh, it it says this in in Deuteronomy, it says, if anyone is poor among your fellow Israelites, so it's almost as if God's going, there shouldn't be, but but if there is, then act like this, care for them, lend freely to them, don't charge them interest, Uh, all those things. And then at the end of the chapter, it says this, there will always be poor people in the land. It's almost as if God is going, this is how it should be, but unfortunately, I know this is how it's going to be. There will always be poor. And that's not because God doesn't care. That's because God knows what our hearts are like. And so what does that say for us about the elections? I believe that it tells us that those of us who believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, those who have been who understand the reality of Easter, have to, have to ask of our politicians, will you care for the poor among us? 
will one of your priorities be genuine care for all? And so as we pray into who we're going to vote for, as we pray into who we are going to elect, and as we pray into how we will hold them accountable once we've elected them, I think one of the gospel imperatives is that God's desire for people in his kingdom and God's desire that the effect of the gospel be that there be no poor among us. And so I think as we look at parties, look at candidates, we need to say, does this person carry a genuine concern for the poor? Does this party or this platform have a, a genuine concern to uplift people and close that horrendous poverty gap we see in our, in our country? Because the gospel demands that everybody have what they need and everybody live a complete and full life. Thank you for joining us.